Hey, 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 good morning everyone. Tuesday morning, the 22nd of December 2020. It's good to be back with you again. This morning's devotion was a reading from Matthew chapter 7, reading verses 22 and 23, which read, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. The question we're looking at this morning is, are you actually a Christian? And here's a story I found in the archives. It was an old historic church, and I was a young preacher who was honored to be invited to speak for the Sunday service. The host was a gray-haired gentleman who had been in the church for more than 60 years, so it was only natural that I wanted to extract as much wisdom and personal experience from him as I could muster. How many years have you been a Christian? I asked. He replied, telling me that he'd been a member of that church for more than 65 years. He began telling me about all the boards and committees he had served on. I was impressed, but I didn't get an answer to my question. So I rephrased it. Was it in this church that you became a believer in Jesus Christ? He answered, joined the church at the age of 12 and embarked on another long discourse. I asked again, tell me about how you came to faith in Christ. With this question, his eyes fell to the ground, and in an instant, I knew he had understood my first question. He quietly said, I hate to admit this, but I've never really become a Christian. Joined the church, you know, and served on every board and committee there is, but I could never bring myself to admit that I was a sinner and needed to be saved. This man knew the language, he knew the songs, he knew the workings of the church, but he didn't know him who said that he is Lord. Are there many like us, and more pointedly, are you perhaps one of them? Jesus spoke the words of warning which we read this morning in Matthew chapter 7. To rectify this we need to realize the need to be saved, but from what you may ask? Your sin, which has separated you from God, has driven a wedge between you and His mercy. Most understand this important truth, but fail to act on it. We must believe that Jesus Christ is God's provision for your sin, and that He died for you. Paul writes in Romans, sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. We also need to believe that God will honor what Christ did as you ask for His forgiveness. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 reads, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. My dear friends, what could be a greater tragedy than going to church for all of your life, and yet being left behind when Christ returns. Make sure that you are not among those who know a lot about churches, but don't know Him who gave birth to the church. My prayer is that as we enter this season, and as we remember the birth of Christ, that we would continue to remember His workings of earth, on earth, that we would also remember His death and resurrection. May the Lord be with you, may He bless you. May it cause His face to shine upon you and be with you always. Goodbye.